Welcome back. In this section, we are going to cover the next step in managing through career displacement, job search strategies. As we discussed in the previous section, finding a job takes a while, so get started right away. Remember, it is a process, and you can help yourself by staying organized and treating the process of finding a job like you would a job. Something I can't stress enough, don't panic and take the first job you are offered if it isn't the right fit. A critical step to finding your next job is assessing yourself, which we discussed in the last section. But another step just as critical is to assess who has what you are looking for. What companies have the types of jobs you want? Remember, it is not about the number of resumes you distribute, but the fit of your resume and you with those companies that you're connecting with. Okay, let's get started. Ultimately, you are responsible for your job search, but there could be others that can be a big help. It can be true it's not what you know, but who you know. That's right, I'm talking about networking. Networking in this scenario is simply using personal contacts to learn about opportunities and connect with those opportunities. Did you know that almost 80% of job opportunities never even get advertised? Studies show that referrals are the number one source of finding talent for many organizations, nearly 34% of all hires. So using your network of friends, relatives, previous coworkers, and acquaintances is a great way to find your next job. Who might be in your network list? We've mentioned friends, family, coworkers, but here are a few others. Neighbors, social friends, education instructors, church members, fraternity or sorority members, customers, business contacts such as a dentist, a doctor, hairstylist, and then trade association members, and who knows someone that might know someone. Jot down a list of people that you might have in your network. Be specific with first and last names. You might start an Excel spreadsheet with a list of people, including their contact information and spaces for notes about your conversations with them to help you keep organized. Keep in mind that people that make your network list need to be people that you have had some type of interaction with or have been suggested to you through another good acquaintance. A person within your network should not be someone that you've met once and held a casual conversation with. Let's talk about making the most of your network. Here are a few things to ask those that you've identified for your network. Tell me about your job and organization. What do you enjoy about your job and or company? How are business and the industry for your company right now? Remember that being inquisitive and asking questions of your network friends is the best approach. Focus little time on talking about yourself unless otherwise asked. Explain that you are looking for opportunities, the areas you are interested in, and mention that they keep you in mind if they hear of anything or know someone. Keep in mind, a networking meeting is not the place to try to sell yourself or ask for a job. Its purpose is to gather information about opportunities, gain insight on areas you might be interested in, develop realistic expectations for what is available, and even practice your interviewing skills. Some of us find it hard to accept help, but keep in mind that networking ranks among the top ways to find a job. One thing that can make accepting that help a little easier is to remember to be a courteous networker. Follow up and thank those that help you. Don't put your network friends on the spot. Again, approach meetings as a fact-finding mission, not begging for a job. Don't make the situation awkward for your peers by wallowing in your situation or bad-mouthing your previous employer. And most importantly, return the favor. Networking is a two-way street. As you network, you may hear of opportunities that aren't the right fit for you, but might be of interest to one of your other network peers. Or you might find out information they might find useful. Let them know. Networking isn't the only way to find opportunities. Let's move on and explore a few other viable options. Coming in right behind referrals are online job boards. There are thousands of online job boards out there from the large boards like Monster.com and CareerBuilder to a number of niche job boards such as AdCareers.com. 
AgCareers.com is niche based on industry, agriculture. Some niche boards are based on geographic region, career type, ethnicity, and many other types of criteria. The important thing to remember about job boards is there are a variety to consider and to find those that have the best and most opportunities in the areas you are considering. Online job boards are typically easy to use and give job seekers an easy resource to view a lot of opportunities and compare them. For job seekers, it's a cheap option. It should be free. They provide you with the opportunity to connect with the right employer through an application or you can post your resume and let employers seek you out. Most job boards also have ways to make your job search easier, such as search agents. These are keywords that you can set up to alert you when new jobs are posted within, with that keyword, and helpful articles and information. A couple of key things about job board. Services for you as a job seeker should be free. There are so many great resources out there that don't charge job seekers that you should not need to use a source that is going to charge you. Review the security of the site. Some require you to set up an account to use their services. Others do not. Neither is really better than the other. As long as you know how your contact information will be used, they don't ask for too much contact information, such as a social, social security number, and that it won't be provided to an outside party. Some employers with opportunities on a job board may redirect you to their corporate career site to apply. This is okay, and it has to do with tracking procedures of the employer. We have some employers that receive over 300 resumes per day, and these tracking systems help manage those resumes and track them. Keep in mind that once you have sent your application to the job posting, it is the employer's responsibility for the follow-up communication. And not all employers have a great procedure in place to do this. Continue to be persistent with the employer, not the job board. If you are not followed up with, with after two weeks to three weeks of submitting your application, it's okay to contact them. If you post your resume, keep a log of all of the places that you've posted it, and then keep it up to date, and remove your resume when your search is complete. Don't rely on your posted resumes to get you a job. Keep actively searching and apply to positions of interest. Another great source of information on job opportunities are company websites. However, you need to know the companies and they have to have a career site for them to be helpful. If you have a targeted list of companies of interest, investigating opportunities and learning more about these organizations is a great way to use company websites. Not all companies have an online application option, and listings may not always be up to date, depending on how often changes are made to the site. We'll talk about this in the interviewing session, but company websites are a great source of information to help you prepare and look knowledgeable during an interview. Headhunters or recruiters also provide resources to assist with your job search. These types of recruiters work directly with companies and source candidates to fill the employer's position. Different than a job board, they have interaction throughout the process with both the employer and job seeker. Recruiters typically focus on a niche, whether it be by industry, region, or experience level, for example. You'll want to work with a recruiter that focuses on the types of jobs that are suited for you. People have different perspectives on using headhunters. Some of the pros include having someone to do some of the searching for you. They typically know a lot of people with opportunities, and they will be aggressive to place you. That's how they make their money. Some of the cons are that oftentimes the recruiter will not inform you right off the bat of which employers they are trying to place you with in fear that you'll go directly to them and apply. Headhunters are an expensive option for employers. A recruiter typically makes anywhere from 20 to 35 percent of the placement's first year's salary. So if an employer has other viable candidates from other sources, such as a job board, they may focus their efforts on selecting a candidate from there to avoid that added cost. Again, you need to determine if using a headhunter is a good option for you. If you do, here are a few things to be sure to ask those recruiters that you are considering. How long have you been recruiting? What are the areas 
of specialty. How long have you been focused in this area? What is your success rate? Will you consult with me prior to submitting my resume? Do you charge your applicants any fees? The answers to these questions can help you form your decisions on which recruiters to go with. One note, most recruiters do not charge applicant fees, and we would recommend you stay away from scenarios that request for you to pay a fee. Here are a few other more traditional methods to investigate as you look for job opportunities. Newspaper ads, trade publications, career fairs, employment and temporary agencies, and union offices. Now that you've got all of the kinds of ways to find out about job opportunities, let's get you ready for the next step, creating a resume that will catch attention.